When I first started catching the Milky Way bug five years ago, I was looking for places in Ohio that would allow me to practice getting better Milky Way photos. That's when I first found the John Glenn Astronomy Park, JGAP for short. It's one of the few areas in Ohio where you can see the Milky Way with your own eyes, which makes it a great place to stargaze or to practice your astrophotography. You can find my previous videos from JGAP here. JGAP first opened in the summer of 2018 and has become a popular destination for space enthusiasts. The park is located one mile from Old Man's Cave in Hawking Hill State Park and is kept going by volunteers from the Friends of Hawking Hill State Park. Unfortunately, John Glenn himself passed the end of 2016 before the project was completed and he never was able to visit the park himself. The volunteers and the director usually do programs on Friday and Saturday nights from March through November, weather permitting, covering a whole range of topics from planets to stars, the moon, etc. while waiting for it to get dark. Once astronomical night has started, visitors can even be treated with a view through the on-site observatory's big telescopes. Their website, jgap.info, has more information about the park and the volunteers and how you can get involved. Because there is limited space for cars, free parking passes are required on program nights. You can register at registration.jgap.org. The plaza itself is based on several astronomical features. Not only is the plaza laid out based on the cardinal directions, east, west, north, and south, for example, when comparing the size of the plaza to the bench in the middle, it is scaled based on the size of the sun versus the size of Jupiter, which also happens to be how the bench got its name, the Jupiter bench. The short pole with the ball on top in the middle of the bench represents the size of the Earth. There is a hole in that ball, which then lines up towards the top of the empty flagpole to help visitors locate the North Star, Polaris. On the walls of the plaza, you'll also notice the raised sections with the angled slots built into them. These slots align with the appropriate solstice events, so that on each solstice, the sun would rise or set in that slot. On the south end of the plaza, you'll find a sundial built into the ground. At the base of the Jupiter bench, there's even electrical outlets, which makes setting up telescopes and cameras much simpler without having to worry about how you're going to keep them powered all night. Even if you don't have your own telescope, your astrophotography rig to bring, there's still plenty of space beyond the plaza to lay out a blanket in the grass and watch those twinkling stars. If you visit on a night they are doing a program, the Fridays or Saturdays, March through November, the observatory will usually be open and have the roof rolled back for people to get a peep through the 28-inch telescope. The rest of the week on non-program nights, if it's forecast to be clear and the moon isn't out, you will generally find at least a couple of adventurous folks with their telescopes set up that are more than happy to answer questions about JGAP, the night sky, as well as sharing their views of various objects in the sky, from random galaxies, nebulas, star clusters, or planets. Whether you are an amateur astrophotography pleb like myself, still using your DSLR and your camera lens, or if you have a more advanced dedicated setup, you'll find JGAP is a great place to collect that deep space images away from most of the city light pollution as it sits on the edge of a Bortle 3 and a Bortle 4. The recent reconstruction of the lodge has slightly affected the southern horizon despite their claims they were keeping the astronomy park in mind when they designed all of the excessive outdoor and upward facing lighting.
So come on out to JGAP the next clear night that you can and experience the darker skies for yourself or bring someone with you to experience for the first time. If I'm down there, I've always got my pair of 20 by 80 binoculars on hand to do some visual observing with the random visitors that come through. It's even easier if you're staying at the lodge or at the cabins, as there's now an access path between JGAP and the cabins. I have spent many a long night at JGAP over the years, and the friendships have been incredible. I've learned so much from the guys I've talked to while standing around in the dark plaza watching our equipment do its thing. Or in the cases where someone was having an issue, everyone pitches in to get everything figured out. If you're on Facebook, you can follow the JGAP page for updates about programs as well as the Friends of JGAP Images page, where a lot of us have shared our images from JGAP. Since seeing the individual frames on the cameras in the middle of the night doesn't quite have the same impact as the final combined image. Even though the night sky at JGAP isn't as dark as it is out west or at a true dark sky park, it can still be a great experience. Hopefully I'll see you out there. Thanks for watching.